Hello everyone and welcome to Paula's Soapbox Live. My guest today is a beloved actress to daytime audiences. She has played Taylor Walker on The Days of Our Lives, Rebecca Shaw on General Hospital, but of course you probably know her best for her Emmy winning role as Emily Quartermain on General Hospital. Well, she is now nominated for another Emmy for her role as Liza Park on Tainted Dreams, the web series. It's my pleasure to welcome to the show, Natalia Livingston. Hey, Hi. thank you so much for Hi. coming. Thank you for having me, Paula. It's so nice to meet you. It's I've so heard nice so many things about you and your show. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Love hearing that. <laughs> yes. Indeed. So congratulations on your Emmy nomination for Tainted Dreams. That's so exciting. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations, all, yeah, and congratulations also because you just got married last, last fall, so that's cool. I did, I did. Two two big, wonderful things happened, so yeah, right, thank you. Very yeah, much. so that. is it true that you and your now husband had crushes on each other in college and then reconnected on Facebook years later? Yes, that is true. Um, his name is Matt, um, mm -hmm. Matt Aldag, and uh, we went to Emory together um, mm -hmm. in Atlanta, Emory University. And um, I was a sociology major, he was a, a neuroscience major, um, and uh, um, the easiest major and the hardest major, <laughs> it seems like. <laughs> but um, but uh, there was a Sadie Hawkins dance. Um, and I just had, had had this big crush on him, so I um, so I asked a friend of his if he would ask him if he would go to this dance with me because I was really shy, and um, and he and he said no because he was really into this other girl at the time, or sort of seeing this other girl. But yeah. um, it turns out that I guess he had a crush on me too, um, but we just we just never really connected in college we had a lot of the same mutual friends um and then he went to ucla after um after emory and uh he got his phd there so he was there for like gosh maybe seven years and i was there as well on the abc lot over in los feliz and we just didn't know that we were in the same city so he was yeah. on the west side I was on the I was on the east side, um, and then, gosh, many years later, he was in D.C., and I was already back here in Atlanta, and um, I saw him on Facebook and reached out to him, and we just didn't stop talking after that. <laughs> okay, so you initiated the contact on Facebook, yeah? I did, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I did. and it, that's usually not like me. I usually don't initiate things, but yeah. um, with him, I just thought, you know what, I, I have to do this. I just have to, so... I reached out to him and he's he's just so wonderful i'm very very blessed he's he's an incredible incredible guy that's such a great story yeah thank that's, you <laughs> that's, like, that's like a soap opera kind of you know fairy tale yeah that's how i feel with him i i just um you know i'd kind of just given up i, I didn't think that it was going to happen you know and um i was and you know, and then he, that this, he came up and he, you know, he was, he's just wonderful. I just, every day I'm, I'm so grateful. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> that's so great. And all of your fans watching now are saying, oh, I'm so <laughs> happy for her. So. Thank you. I found the, the real life Prince Charming. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's Finally. Great. Yeah. Um, so are you in Georgia right now? I am, yeah. You I'm are, okay. Um, yeah, I wondered if you if you kind of uh, went between Georgia and, and L.A., so. I do, yeah. Georgia um, and L.A., uh, quite a bit. Um, going there, as you know, next week um, yeah. for the end. Um, but, yeah, so this is um, this is my home here in Atlanta, and um, this is a, a little office that I have for Actor Boutique, and I private coach actors here and do headshot photography and all sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about Actor Boutique because I, I hadn't wasn't aware that you did that until mm -hmm. I started researching you, and it, it seems like a really uh, neat endeavor. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, after uh, after Dave, um, uh, I I took a few months off and um, I traveled and I went to 
Italy and studied photography and and I went to Paris and I studied photography there. I'd, I'd been saving up for a long time and I was like, you know what, now's the time to do it. You know, I'm not getting yeah. any younger and I'm not working right now, so let me just treat myself. So I learned a lot of things there that are now helping me with, with, um, with, with the business. So one of which is photography. Um, and so it's a small business. So it's a, it's a one-stop shop for actors, um, here in Atlanta. So I have a class once a week that I teach. It's a on-camera technique and, um, I teach it at a place called Big Picture Casting here in town. They're a great, great casting company. Um, and then I do headshot photography and private coaching, uh, for auditions out of my home. Um, and, uh, just, you know, help a lot of actors, um, each day and it's it's wonderful I, I really love it it's a it's a great way for me to you know have flexibility so if I need to travel for an acting job I can do that you know so I can just take t take some time off because it's my business you know uh, yeah um, so there's a lot of flexibility there and and I can also be independent you know I'm sort of earning a living outside of you know any particular acting job so there's really no pressure there you know yeah. and I've, I've found a way to you know to to make you know, make a living um yeah and uh so i i really i love it i love it so what's the most rewarding part for you about doing something like this and helping actors <laughs> other actors yeah well um i think you know i i get quite a few actors that um that you know have been in another business for a long time and they're just feeling numb and just sort of you know dead inside and just wanting a change a new chapter in their life and they just want to do something new or something that they've always wanted to do and have never had the courage to do it yeah. and so I really especially love helping those actors um, so I can you know give them the confidence to try something that they think that they'll love and then when they end up loving it that's that's the most rewarding part for me you know? yeah well you mentioned studying photography in Italy and Paris mm -hmm. and I noticed that you produced a couple of documentaries for PBS and mm -hmm. National Geographic so mm -hmm. is this kind of the direction you want to take your career doing more behind the scenes behind the camera work um, yeah, maybe at some point, um, maybe at some point I will. I'm definitely open to it. Um, so, um, I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed my time at Nat Geo. That was, that was after days and GH and when I left LA, so then I traveled for a little while. And, and then at the end of that, it was sort of my eat, pray, love time, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> so three months away by myself, you know, in Europe traveling. Um, and then at the end of that, I thought, well, you know, now's the time to sort of make all of these dreams come true. So it had always been on my bucket list to uh, live in Europe. So I did that. And then it had always been on my bucket list to live in New York City. Yeah. So that was the next, um, you know, that was the next goal or the next big challenge. And next adventure so ended up moving to New York and um, I don't know if you've heard this story Paula but how I got into National Geographic and how that how that show came about I don't, I don't think so I, I did some research and I, I had a difficult time finding it so <laughs> you have something to yeah yeah sure um, so I um, I went to New York and I was and I was definitely looking at opportunities behind the scenes. So in producing, and uh, so my manager set me up with uh, a friend of his who uh, at the time was the uh, head of development at National Geographic, and um, I went in for a hosting position. And when I when I went in, I said, you know what? actually I'm not interested in being a host right now, but I've always wanted to be a producer. You know, what, what do I have to do to work for Nat Geo as a producer? And she was like, she said, um, she said, okay, well right now we're really interested in shows on Alaska. So I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to give you two weeks, go off, try to come up with a great show idea based in Alaska mm -hmm. and then we'll see. You know, so I left her office there in, in New York and just 
you know, started asking everyone I knew, my doctor, the lady at the checkout line in the grocery store, <laughs> you know, people in parks just sitting there on benches, you know, just, I mean, everyone, um, like, do you know anything interesting about Alaska? And uh, finally, a friend of mine from high school, um, you know, he, he said, well, um, you know, let me tell you about this really fascinating group in in Nikolaivsk, Alaska, and um, so I pitched the idea, and before I knew it, I was going from New York to Alaska, back and forth, meeting this this group of, of people, of uh, fishermen, yeah. and uh, boatmen in Alaska, um, mostly salmon fishermen, and just loved it, and uh, I, was, I was sort of the main scout and the main, you know, person before they brought the big crew out for the pilot. Yeah, um, met the most wonderful people out there, and got to really take a close look at their lives and see something so different from anything that I had experienced in Hollywood. You know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> just a completely different life. You know, mm -hmm. um, and just lovely, lovely, lovely people. So, um, so we ended up we did the pilot, and then um, and that aired for about five or six times. And they ended up not picking it up because they had too many shows on Alaska. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. But yeah, yeah, it was a great experience. <laughs> I, I wondered, you know, I saw the Red Alaska on your, your IMDb page, and, and I was wondering how that came about. So, um, yeah, I'm glad that you explained that because I looked to see um, how that came about, and I couldn't find anything on it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Well, that was, that's the story. Well, you um, had the experience, though, so even if it wasn't picked up, I mean, that's that's an experience that, you know, no one can take away from you, so. Thank you. Yeah, I, I feel very lucky, um, you know, after Soaps to, to have been able to, to to work for that company and, and to have that experience, and then, you know, to come back here to Atlanta and, and have my own business, I, I feel very, very grateful. Yeah. So. It wasn't easy. <laughs> well, you, you mentioned that you had originally wanted to host. Um, and it, I actually I didn't want to host. You didn't want to host? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not at that time. <laughs> well, you, you did host a show when you lived in Georgia years ago called Unique mm -hmm. Discoveries. Yeah. And, and you kind of got pushed into that one, too. So... <laughs> was that kind of the moment that you you thought, well, you know, I may want to do something in front of the camera more? Yeah, um, I had been thinking about that for a long time. Um, when I did that show, I was in college, mm -hmm. um, so I was. It was a way for me to make money on the side um, while I was studying, um, and uh, and I definitely liked it. But there's, you know, as you know, being a host, it's it's your yourself you know right. it's so much easier I think as an actor to play another character it, you know? it is easier to play another character than it is to be yourself most of the time it's yeah yeah, yeah definitely definitely yeah so well, then you moved to uh you moved to Los Angeles and mm -hmm. you got a job at Home Depot as opposed to you know waitressing <laughs> or anything like that mm -hmm. um so and that's where you met a talent manager so yeah so how long had you been working there when this happened I had been there for maybe about two years a year and a half and he's a fantastic manager um, he was actually the one that that recommended me to his friend um, at Nat Geo um, yeah. many 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 years later um, so his name is David Sweeney he's a fantastic guy just one of the good guys in Hollywood yeah. and um, and I was working there and um, you know, I, I think I helped him landscape his front yard or do something like that. And, uh, yeah. and he said, uh, he was like, oh, okay, well, you're here for acting. Okay. Well, you know, why don't you come into my office and, and, uh, and we'll interview you, see how you do, maybe send you out on some auditions. So, um, so, it, you know, it just kind of started from there. He was the one that, that, that first got me auditions and yeah. opportunities. So, so, so did you think like you're you're working in the the gardening section of Home Depot? Did you think when somebody tells you, "Hey, I'm a talent manager," like, "Yeah, right," you know? 
Yeah, I mean, I think there was a little bit of that, like, you know, okay. But yeah. I, I don't know, there was just something really decent about him. Yeah. And, um, and you know, I was right to think that because he, he really is such a decent person. Um, he's, he's a good person. Um, so, yeah, it was, a, it was, you know, it was a little crazy. But um, I also met um, one of the the heads of ABC there helped him landscape his his front yard and then uh, one of the directors um, as well. Um, she was I, my last uh, customer was one of the directors on General Hospital. I think she was an assistant director at that time. So yeah. uh, maybe fortuitous <laughs> that, you know, yeah, that, that you chose to work at Home Depot as opposed to somewhere else. You know, it, it, it was yeah. different. You probably stood out a little bit as opposed yeah. to being like a waitress in L.A. Everyone is breaking into the acting business. So, yeah, I think that probably gave you a little bit of an edge there. Yeah, it's funny. So many people ask me about it. And, um, and you know, I'm always surprised. But I guess, um, you know, for me, uh, it just, it was, you know, it was a, a brand and a company that I recognized, you know, from Georgia. Yeah. Um, and also I could work during the day, which was really nice. Um, you know, I didn't want to wait tables or work in a bar or something where I'd get home at two o'clock in the morning, you know, and then have to audition or whatever. So, um, so it was just really, it was practical and, and, uh, you know, it was, it was, yeah. just, it was a great job. There were a lot of really good people there. So, yeah. Well, you mentioned general hospital, so we'll go ahead and move into, to GA. Sure. I know a lot of people are going to want to hear about your time at general hospital. Mm -hmm. um, so is it true that your hometown friends helped you with your audition tape? That is true. Yeah, you've done done some great research there. Um, yeah, some. Uh, yeah, so I I'd, I'd been in musicals um, growing up, um, and uh, so uh, you know one of the guys that I had um, performed in this musical with, I just called him up and I said I really need you to read opposite me, and um, so he came over and we taped it in my living room and you know it wasn't the best tape I tell you that, um, <laughs> but. Um, you know, but I guess they saw something there that mm -hmm. that made them think, you know, this this is the right girl for the part. And I'm so happy they did. So did, so did they give you something to read or did you have to pick something out on your own? No, I had a Emily Zander scene, I'm pretty sure. Okay. At the time. Yeah. So um, so little did I know how big that, that was going to be. You know? Yeah. And so I know what did when they killed Xander off. Did you experience a little bit of fan backlash from that? I did. I did. I remember that. Uh, yeah, fans were furious about that. And, you know, um, and I, I just think it was so unfortunate that they did that, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was never anything that I wanted, um, which no one ever thought that it was. I mean, you know, Chad Brannon and I were very close and worked really, really well together. Um, and I just loved working with him. So it was just so sad, you know, when they did that and you just kind of never know why writers make certain decisions. But, you know, I think that there are so many stories that could have been told, um, with Emily and Xander and Nicholas and, you know, um, yeah. lucky and they just, you know, that, that didn't, that didn't help. <laughs> yeah. So I was really, really sad when that happened. And I know Chad was too. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and they brought him back when they ushered the Rebecca character off the show. So what did you think about that? Well, I kept thinking, you know, maybe there is a way that um, maybe all this time Rebecca is really Emily and the Emily that they killed was really Rebecca. Yeah. You know, she's going off with Xander um, and maybe it was you know, Rebecca that fell in love with Nicholas and, you know, and maybe now Emily's, you know, back with her true love, Xander. I don't know. It's, I mean, you know, I yeah. just feel like with soaps, um, you know, you never say never. And, um, you know, if they really wanted to, they could, the writers could come up with a really great way for Emily, you know, to come back. Yeah. And, Xander to come back, I think, and and I think that there are a lot of fans out there that want it, um, yeah. you know, which is really heartwarming and touching for me. Yeah. It makes me feel really good when I see that, and I'm 
you know, so grateful for it. But um, so I don't know, you know, there's just, we'll see. Um, I know I'm going to see Frank Valentini um, at the Emmys um, next week. So maybe that will be a topic of conversation. We'll see. So you would be open to a return given the right storyline? I would, yeah, definitely. Um, I think given the right storyline, and I'm very happy here in my life in, you know, in Atlanta, um, mm -hmm. but, um, but you know, I still have a home in LA and I could travel back and forth. So, yeah. um, so it's, it's, a, it's a definite possibility and I'd, I would be open to it. And I've talked to my husband about it and he thinks that it sounds really exciting if there was ever a way to do that. So yeah. um, I'm open to it. And I think that the fans, you know, have a lot of great storyline ideas, yeah. um, ways that maybe it could happen, you know? There's there's always a way of, of doing that. I know uh, around the time that they killed Emily off, that was about the same time that I started having a soap opera blog. And I uh, wrote at the time that maybe Jason faked Emily's death to get her away from Nicholas because... Nicholas at the time was kind of dangerous and, you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, there's different ways that they could go about it. I'm sure, you know, and, and then they could bring, like you said, the whole Rebecca thing into it. And yeah, mm -hmm. there's, there's different ways they could, it's definitely possible. So. Yeah. I mean, we'll see, you know, um, we'll see. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you keep us updated on that. So if you, you know, if anything <laughs> happens, you let us know. I will. I will. And a lot of it is up to the fans too. You know, if they write in or mention it or come up with a great idea and can tell me about it or tell you about it to tell me, yeah. um, you know, something that I can pitch, that would be great. Yeah. And I've talked to him and I know he would be open to it too. So yeah, yeah. that would be so great. So <laughs> when you, when you joined General Hospital, had you watched the show before? I had, you know, I had, I had watched, um, not, not a lot, but but I had caught it here and there. You know, yeah. um, I remember seeing Maurice. I remember seeing um, Alicia Willis um, yeah. on there, who later became a dear friend. Um, so yeah, I, I do remember a little bit, but I wasn't I wasn't much of a soap watcher before that. Yeah. Yeah. So did you know anything of the Emily character? Um, I knew a little bit, but really, it was a crash course when I got when I got the job, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Chad. Chad really helped me a lot, just understanding the character, and so did Tyler. Um, you know, he helped me as well. But, you know, on soaps, it's really, you know, you get the job, and a few days later, you're just thrown into this character, yeah. you know, and you have to make her your own. Um, yeah. And a lot of it really has to do with the writers and how, you know, what they give you to work with. Yeah. Well, you had this um, breast cancer storyline on General mm -hmm. Hospital, and it was after you had found a benign lump in your breast. So mm -hmm. was that inspired by that experience, or was that just sort of happenstance? I think that that was just happenstance. Um, I hadn't really, uh, I don't think I had mentioned it to them. Sorry, yeah. My <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, it was just, it was more happenstance. I hadn't really mentioned it to them until they told me about the storyline idea. And then I was like, oh, okay, well, this is what happened to me. And then, um, you know, many years later, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she had stage four um, and went through chemotherapy and radiation. Um, and then was clear for many, many years after that. So. Yeah. So she recovered, but so it really, really hit home. I mean, it's one thing to have, you know, to need a biopsy, but it's another thing when you have a family member, especially your mom yeah. that has breast cancer, you know? Yeah, um, I can, re I can relate. My mom had breast cancer too. So she's, she's okay. Yeah. She's uh, 15 years out. So she's, she's doing good. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm so happy to meet you. I, it's, it's really rare to meet someone these days who hasn't been touched in some way or another by cancer. So it's, it's pretty scary. It really is. It really is. You know, it's uh, every day is, is precious. You know? Yeah. It really is. Life is, yeah, life is precious. Every day, like you said, is precious. So. Yeah. And I think if I, you know, if I could go back and do it over, I probably would have pay, played it very differently. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of watching my mom go through it, uh, you know, 
gave me a lot of insight. And I think that I was so young when I was given that storyline. You know? Yeah. And uh, I think that um, I think that people deal with it in different ways. And you know, the way Emily dealt with it was, you know, she lashed out a lot in anger. Um, mm -hmm. And that's definitely something that people do. Um, but the people that I've seen later in life um, that deal with it, you know, they really seem to have this kind of covering a lot. You know, at least my mom was. She was always smiling. She was always happy, yeah. always trying to make the best of a situation and always, you know, just trying to make each day count. Underneath, she had all of the pain and the sadness and the fear and the anger, but but she really covered it um, just trying to get through the day and just, you know, willing up every last ounce of strength that she had, you know, which I think is what people do, you know, in that situation. You don't kind of lie down and play the victim. It's more of a, all right, I'm going to make it, you know? Yeah, find the uh, fight. Mm -hmm. And I think that if I were to play it over again, I probably would have, I probably would, would add more of, of that, you know? Yeah. Well, like you said, you were pretty young when you were given that storyline and you yeah. hadn't been on the show long when that happened. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for, you know, the writing, you know, that, that the writers gave me. I mean, they, they gave me some really incredible stuff to work with and I feel very lucky and blessed. So. Yeah. Well, and you had the, the Emily Wright storyline was another really difficult storyline mm -hmm. that you had. So yeah. is it true that you, you don't really remember filming that scene? I really don't. Um, I mean, I remember, um, I remember after, um, just, you know, I remember the directors coming up to me and the producers and Tyler making sure I was okay. Um, but I don't remember the actual, uh, taping of that particular moment, you know, mm -hmm. so I, I really blocked it out. So I can, I can only imagine, you know, people that, uh -huh. that women that are, are, that actually experience this in real life, how, you know, how, how they must want to block it out or how maybe the mind does that, you know, it just snaps and yeah, you know, takes you to a dead, you know, a, a black space so that you don't have to, you know, yeah. so you can maybe zone out, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I can imagine that, that was a difficult scene to film because, I mean, you and Tyler were dating at the time when that was filmed, right? Yes, we were. Yeah, yeah, we were dating. So that's, um, you know, in some ways, I guess, in some ways maybe it was easier because, um, you know, you, you have such closeness with someone and trust, trust, and you know that they're going to, you know, be respectful and, you know, um, do the scene the way you would choreograph it and all of those things, you know? Um, yeah. but at the same time, it's also very hard because that's the last thing you want in your mind is something yeah. like, you know, you don't um, want that association, obviously. Yeah. It's, it's really hard. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's not something that you, you know, you would, you would want to go through with a, a partner or, you know, boyfriend, yeah. or whatever, yeah. you know? Yeah, so that was hard, but he was he was very very kind and and sweet and you know helped a lot. So yeah, yeah. Well, yeah mm -hmm. sounds like that that kind of made it a little easier to get through in a lot of ways. So yeah, and I think just kind of thinking about you know I know that that GH said that they were really gonna um, do a lot of uh, you know. Um, I guess press and that sort of thing around it to, you know, help victims. Yeah. You know, in some way. Um, and so that was that was a lot of just why we were doing it, you know, and passionate about it. Yeah. Well, when you left General Hospital as Emily, mm -hmm. uh, they talked to you about the possibility of bringing you back as another character. So was yeah. this the Rebecca character? That was the Rebecca character. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that was the Rebecca character. Um, so that was a lot of fun. You know, I, I, I really, I think Emily's more my, more my style. I really, I really loved, I loved playing Emily. Um, Rebecca was a challenge. I think, 
it, we, I just wasn't quite sure what she was, you know, who she was all about or what the, you know, what, yeah. what they wanted for her. Um, but, but yeah, so that was fun. It was, it was, it was great to come back anytime, you know, any yeah. opportunity back. Okay. So let's talk about Tainted Dreams. This okay. web series yeah. that you're on that you're nominated for an Emmy for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for those who aren't familiar with it, Tainted Dreams is a web series. It's a soap within a soap. Mm -hmm. And the soap opera is actually the behind the scenes lives of the actors and actresses and crew from this soap opera called Painted Dreams. <laughs> so if that makes any sense, <laughs> following what I'm saying, hopefully everybody's following what I'm saying. Uh, you play Liza Park, and yeah. your character is um, she's sort of trying to get over a breakup with um, I guess he's the an executive at the soap. Yeah, Grant. Alvin. And okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. So she's trying to sort of navigate getting over that because he's just gotten married. He didn't want to get married to her, so she's right. dealing with all of that. Right. And um, you gave a child up for adoption. Your character did. Mm -hmm. And I can only assume that that is Adam's child because he didn't want children. So I'm, I'm going to assume that. Okay. That hasn't come out yet, but I'm going to assume that. It hasn't come out yet. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So is there going to be a season two? I think so. Yeah. From what I've heard, there definitely is. Um, I know that... Uh, that um, you know that the the producers are in constant contact, and uh, you know, and, and a lot of the cast members were all in touch and excited about you know going back up to New York and, and filming again. So so we'll see, we'll see. Yeah. Well, there there something. are a lot of veteran soap actors in this series. Yeah. As you as you mentioned, Grant Alexander plays Adam, um, yes. and then Colleen Zink. Uh, Alicia Minshew, uh, I mean, yeah, there's, there's countless actors, so. Yeah, Sonia, um, oh, it was so much fun. Um, Sonia Blanchiardo, she, uh, is, um, the, the one that contacted me, and she's kind of the mastermind and the, you know, do it all behind Tainted Dreams, and she's fabulous, fabulous, um, wonderful, um, to work with, and, um, but she, you know, when she first approached me, it was like, well, you know, you'll play opposite Grant Alexander, and your best friend is going to be Alicia Minshew. And I'll say, oh, my God, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I'd always wanted to work with those two. It was funny. I mean, they're they're two of my favorites. And um, I can't imagine her mentioning two other people that I would probably want to work with more than those two. Yeah. And so I just – I know that if Alicia and I lived in the same city and worked together, we would be close, dear, dear friends, you know. Yeah. She was just fantastic to work with, and so was so was Grant. Yeah. Well, it yeah. seems like it seems like uh, everyone had fun doing that show because you can kind of tell when you watch some of these shows when a cast is having fun with each other. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those shows. So yeah, it was so easy. You know, it was just it was easy. It was fun. Sonia um, ran everything so well. You know, it was um, just it just worked like clockwork. And um, so there's just a really uh, positive, uplifting spirit, you know, from everybody and it was just, it was just really fun. I, I never in a million years thought that I would be nominated for an Emmy, um, you know, um, for the show that, 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 um, I just sort of, I did when I was in New York, I was working for Nat Geo. I had some time off and I did it. And this yeah. is uh, it's just such a wonderful surprise for me. Yeah. So how long did it take to film this first season? Um, I believe it took about two weeks. Yeah. Is what it's I, not I bad. Yeah, it's about about two weeks in New York. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so I I don't know. Um, we'll we'll see. You know what the what the next chapter holds. Um, yeah. With the character and, and with the show, I'm yeah. super excited about it, and I know the the response has been has been great. Yeah, yeah. So, Tainted Dreams, the show, is nominated for a Daytime Emmy for Outstanding Digital Drama Series. So, that's... Yay. Yeah, and you are nominated in the category of Outstanding Supporting Actress. 
or <laughs> guest actress uh, or supporting actress in a digital daytime drama series. And mm -hmm. we should also mention that some of your castmates are nominated as well. Yes. Um, Kelly Minahan Hensley, she's nominated mm -hmm. for lead actress. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Lowry is nominated for lead actor. And yes. Anthony Wilkinson is nominated for supporting or guest actor in a digital drama series. So you guys pretty much have the Emmys covered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited to see everyone and, and, um, and take, take my husband to all of these events, you know. So we're going to be at the pre-party on Wednesday and then the, the main event um, on Friday. And I'm just I'm really excited because he, he's he's in a whole different world. Like he's in the in the sciences. So right. this is all, you know, the entertainment world is very different for him. So I'm excited just to bring him and we, we went, went and got him a fancy suit. And, you know, oh. <laughs> it'll be really fun. So is he looking forward to it or is he dreading having to go and wear the suit and everything? Um, no, he, he's actually, he's looking forward to it. He's, he's, you know, he sometimes dreads big parties, but he's, but he's, he's looking forward to it. And, um, we're, uh, we're going with, um, Tamara and her boyfriend, Tamara Braun yeah. and, her and, um, two other friends of ours. Um, they're all actors, um, or in the industry somehow. And so we're all going to go out to dinner beforehand and then go to the pre-party. Um, so it'll, you know, it'll be fun. Um, yeah just to reconnect with everyone and then see, see everyone from the Tainted Dreams um, cast as well will be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But he, he got a, a designer here in Atlanta who um, uh, gave him one of his designs to wear for oh. the And he's like, really? This is amazing. No one's ever just like, let me take a suit and, you know, like <laughs> wear it to, to yeah. an event. So, um, so it's so cool. He's pretty excited. <laughs> Yeah, and it's a really fancy suit. It's it's really really nice. It's a or tuxedo, I guess. It's a it's yeah. modern modern take on on the tuxedo. Yeah. So what are you, <laughs> what are you gonna wear? Um. So she. Uh. So I guess I can tell you it is navy blue. Mm -hmm. Um. And it's long and it has like diamonds in the middle section. Um. Sort of a low back. Um, flowers mm -hmm. on it. So it's 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 elegant. I think. Yeah. Well, Rebecca Herps, she designed one of your dresses for what? an Emmy for an Emmy Award show too. So that's that's an experience, I guess, having had a, a friend to do that. Yes, yeah. Oh, that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, Rebecca did such a great job, um, and she designed Kimberly's as well. And so the yeah. three of us together. And, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. We went and uh, picked out fabric together and, you know, and then I went over to her house for a fitting and, you know, her, she had certain, a certain vision of how she wanted the dress to go. And I had a certain vision of how I wanted the dress to go. And, and we kind of met somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Um, but it was, uh, it, that was wonderful. I wish she was out here and she could make me another dress. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So are they going to announce the winners in the digital drama series category on Friday night, or are they going to announce it on during when they did the live broadcast on Facebook and Twitter? I believe it's going to be on Friday night at the creative Emmys. I don't think okay. it's be the one on Sunday is the one on Sunday. The one that's broadcast. The one on Sunday is the one that's that's yeah. So it's going to be announced on the Friday. Well, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> if you're going, to, if you're going to air it on Facebook and Twitter, you, want to talk about the digital drama series. I mean, I know. that's that crazy. <laughs> I feel the same way. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> well, you know, I'll hopefully, you know, we'll hear about it before Sunday, before the 30th and, and can announce it. And, you know, best of luck to, to you guys, obviously. Thank you. Um, awesome. At the Thank Emmys. You. So the, the daytime Emmys, which will not include apparently the digital drama series, will be broadcast live on Facebook and Twitter, as I said, on April 30th at 8, 7 central and 5 p.m. Pacific. And for anyone wanting to know, that's at facebook.com uh, slash daytime Emmy Awards and at twitter.com slash daytime Emmys. And also your Actor Boutique, you have a website for that, and that's at actorboutique.com. Yes. Actor boutique. So that's pretty much it. Did you have yeah. anything that you would like to add before we go? That's it. That's it. Just so nice to reconnect and, and to reach out to the 
the you know all the wonderful soap fans out there have really missed seeing everyone at, at different events and um you know it's just really nice nice to be here and i really appreciate you having me oh absolutely well i hope that you come back i hope so, so too paula thank you for all your questions you did a great job oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe the next time you'll come back you'll be two-time emmy winner in italian hey, league so. that would be awesome that would be yeah. awesome that would be wonderful well big hug to everybody and thank you so much yeah thank you you mm -hmm. have a good rest of the day okay you too Bye. Bye.